According to the United Nations, there are 44 countries in Europe, and despite many of them sharing elements of their identity, such as language, culture, and a lot of their history, they are still very different today. Each has its own identity, despite being more or less similar to other countries, and each has its own internal reality, differing from its continental neighbors. So in this video, using a set of maps, I thought we'd take a look at some statistics and pieces of information that allow us to learn about Europe as a continent, but also about its countries and how they are in fact different in many aspects, trying to draw a conclusion that we can take away from each of the maps. There's a virtually infinite amount of maps we can use for these comparisons, so if the video does well, I can do a part two of it. Let's start with the one on the thumbnail. First, nuclear power. There's a big debate right now in Europe about whether or not nuclear power should be accepted as a clean energy source for the purpose of hitting climate change targets. Apparently, a group of countries led by France wants to and another other led by Germany doesn't. At least this is what I read. And throughout its existence, apart from this particular issue, the debate has always existed. Some defend it as being a cheap and clean energy source, others disagree, or rather, I don't think they disagree in these arguments. They just believe the counter argument of risk is more important, claiming that the risk of meltdowns like the one we saw in Chernobyl or Fukushima in Japan isn't worth the benefit. Keep in mind, I can never assure these maps are fully correct, so if you notice any mistakes, please point them out in a comment so we can all be aware of them. According to this map, about half of Europe in yellow uses nuclear power, and the other half in blue, not so much. Some have had a nuclear power program in the past, but abandoned it, like Italy, who in a referendum voted 97% in favor of shutting down their program. Italy, along with Austria, Portugal, Denmark, Luxembourg, Ireland, Iceland, and Norway, seem to be the only countries in Western Europe that do not use it. The Balkans and Baltic countries, along with Poland and Moldova, are also nuclear free. France is clearly the biggest user of all, with 56 nuclear plants and one more in Construction, followed by Russia with 38, Ukraine and the UK with 15, and then Germany. A fun or not so fun fact, Portugal has no nuclear plants, but Spain <laughs> chose the location of one of theirs right by their border, and in the case of an incident, I guess we'd be equally in trouble. This map shows us the proximity of nuclear reactors throughout the continent. Conclusion, Europe is very divided on nuclear versus non-nuclear. Then temperature. Temperature has been going crazy lately. The other day, there was colder weather in Greece than in the Nordic countries, with Athens once again being covered in snow. But in general, southern European countries are hotter as we can see on this map. This doesn't show temperature averages though, it simply shows the highest temperature ever recorded in each country. But from this data, we can sort of draw the conclusion of where is hotter and colder. According to it, Greece would be the hottest country in Europe if you don't count Turkey as being Europe, followed by Portugal, Spain, Italy, and Bosnia. It's very evident and normal that as you go further north, the max temperature gets lower, the least high being Iceland, Ireland, Norway, and Estonia. Although this data is up to July 2018, and over the past four years, we've broken a lot of temperature records, so there might be higher temperatures already since then. Conclusion, Europe is hotter in the south. Moving on to a statistical comparison, minimum wage. This one is more recent, the data is from 2021. A few of these maps were taken from Statista's Instagram page, all credit to them for putting these together. Only a few countries have specific values, others are just in the ranges we can see on the legends, and many of them have no information available. Maybe the source just didn't have them, or maybe they are countries without minimum wages, or with minimum wages per hour which perhaps don't allow for a direct comparison with countries that have minimum wages per month. Out of the ones identified, Bulgaria is by far the lowest, with a minuscule minimum wage of 332 euros. And a lot of Eastern slash Center Eastern Europe countries have this issue of minimum wages being below 700 euros. The Iberian Peninsula offsets itself from Western Europe by being below 1500, and there's also a big difference within it, with Spain being 1100, while Portugal's is only 776. Portugal has, however, increased its minimum wage a lot over the past years, so maybe it's starting to finally catch up. In this other map that shows us the average monthly wage, the difference is even higher. Switzerland, Luxembourg, and Denmark have their monthly average at over 5,000. Germany and the others in lighter blue have it over 3,200, which is still pretty good, and the rest of Western Europe is in the yellow at over 2,000, except Portugal once again, which is just above 1,000. Then Eastern Europe matches Portuguese numbers, with part of the Balkans and Russia Moldova, Belarus, and Ukraine 
being even worse at under a thousand. Conclusion, Eastern Europe needs to figure out a way of raising their wages. From finance to military, here are the countries in Europe that are a part of NATO. This map, also from Statista, shows us which European countries are members of NATO and when it was they joined. The original members were 10, the ones in the darker blue, and new members were sparse throughout all of the Cold War. But soon after the collapse of the Soviet Union, almost all of Eastern Europe was quick to join, trying to get away from the grasp of the Russians. Today, there are very few European countries that aren't a part of NATO, Ireland, Sweden, Finland, Switzerland and Austria, Bosnia, Serbia, Kosovo, Moldova, Belarus, and Ukraine. Belarus will never join due to its proximity to Russia, and Switzerland and Austria seem to want to remain neutral. But there have been talks of Bosnia joining, as well as Ukraine and Finland. Ukraine is precisely at the center of international debate right now, in part in connection to this issue, with Russia not liking the eastern reach of NATO. Speaking of Russia, this map shows us the EU's import of Russian natural gas, with all EU countries except Denmark and Portugal and Spain, which get its gas from North Africa, being somewhat dependent on Russian gas. Baltic nations, Bulgaria and Sweden plus Finland have 100% of their gas from Russia apparently, and other nations like Poland, Czechia, Austria, Greece, Belgium, Germany, Hungary or Croatia are also highly dependent, a situation that might prove problematic for them in the event of the worsening of the tensions with Russia. It's also cool to compare the membership of NATO to that of the EU, and to notice that double membership, here depicted in purple, is very common. Although there are a few countries that are only members of one. Ireland, Sweden, Finland, Austria and Cyprus are in the EU but not in NATO, and Iceland, Norway, Albania, North Macedonia and Turkey are only in NATO and not the EU. Speaking of the European Union, here is a map of all its current members and current or potential candidates. It was at 28 members, but with the UK leaving it went down to 27, and its reach throughout Europe continues to grow and is almost total at this point. Out of the ones who aren't yet members, Iceland, Norway and Switzerland seem to continue to want to stay out, but the others want to join. Serbia, Montenegro, North Macedonia and Albania are currently candidates, while Bosnia and Kosovo are potential candidates in the future. Turkey was also a candidate, but their application seems to have taken several steps back in the past years. And still regarding the European Union, this map is outdated as it considers 28 members, still including the UK, but it reorganizes Europe's territory into 20 28 equally populated states. This allows us to see which areas of Europe are more or less populated, and especially which countries, as some of them would have to unite with adjacent parts of their neighbor's territory, demonstrating how they are below the average population of other member states. Denmark, for instance, would have to stretch into Sweden, Germany and the Netherlands, as would Portugal and Romania, while other more populated countries would have to break apart, such as Germany or France. It also shows us how some areas of certain countries are sparsely populated. Vasco this hypothetical state that joins part of France and Spain is very large in size, but apparently has the same population than the small area of Brittany. In fact, we can see it here in this map that depicts population density throughout the regions. Conclusion, many European countries have much less than the average population per country, and population concentration slash distribution throughout many of them is very uneven. And what about government types? This map shows us which type of government system each country has. There are very few presidential republics in which the president has the most power, only Belarus and Turkey are identified as such. The vast majority are parliamentary republics, shown in blue, where the government who exerts executive power is elected and legitimized through the national parliament. However, the countries here depicted in green are exactly the same. They just have a king or queen as head of state instead of an elected president. But the real power is in the parliamentary executive as well. Portugal is shown as a semi-presidential republic, which it is technically, but in reality it functions as a parliamentary one as well with the powers of the president being severely limited and very reduced. In opposition, France's semi-presidential republic system gives a lot of power to the president himself, as according to this map, is the case in all other countries in this beige-like color, Poland, Lithuania, Romania, Ukraine and Russia. Conclusion, despite having different definitions and some technical differences, pretty much all of Europe is governed in the same system. A government has executive power and is granted that power by the national parliament, which is elected by the people. The only difference is that in some cases, the president has a little more power than others, and in some there are kings serving the role of head of state, having pretty much no power at all other than symbolic and or diplomatic representation. And finally, the most popular sport by country. Here we can 
see the complete domination of football throughout the continent in green, although it's interesting to see some countries that prefer other sports. Ireland, Gaelic football, Austria skiing, as well as Estonia, while Latvia and Lithuania are more into basketball, at least according to this map. And also we have this extra map of the true borderline of Europe, dividing the countries which use olive oil, the correct choice, and those who choose to use butter when cooking. Although what it actually shows is which of the two products is more consumed per capita. Portugal, Spain, Italy, Greece, Albania, Luxembourg, and Cyprus are the only ones where olive oil surpasses butter. The minority that is obviously correct because olive oil is the best. Also Luxembourg being an island of olive oil in a sea of central European butter is likely due to its gigantic Portuguese immigrant population. So those are a few interesting maps of Europe that teach us about the continents. There are so many more of these that I can use for videos, but I couldn't make an endless video with all of them. So like I said, if you enjoy this, I can always make a part two of it using those additional maps. Leave a comment with your opinions and thoughts and also corrections if you notice any mistakes. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.